All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I know I got a bunch of new subscribers here, so if you haven't been following my channel long enough, I obviously do this YouTube stuff. I also make lures and sell those. It's called Trout Whisperer Tackle. And I was doing all this stuff out of my home office upstairs in my house, which was pretty small with all my inventory and everything crammed into there. This past summer, I decided to build an office and we finished it a couple months ago. I have a whole video of me building the office or the new shop as I'm calling it. And it just shows us building all of this down here. Everything was kind of spread out throughout my house. I wanted to have one central room where everything happened. All of the bait making, the shipping and orders, and then the YouTube editing area and a couple other things that I do all in one space, so it's all out of my living space in the house. In that video, I talked about a few options, uh, shed, addition to the garage, whatever. We ended up building a room down in my basement down here. Used to have the uh, paint booth over here where this empty spot is, but now it's in this nice room in here. So uh, I'm gonna give you guys a tour of the new office because where I left off in the build video of this office was we just did the room and that was it, there was nothing in it. So now I'm gonna show you, I've been using it for a few months and I wanna show you guys how I have it set up and what it looks like. So let's go check it out, give you guys a little tour. This is it, let's check it out. All right, so here we are, we have the space all filled up and I've been using it and kind of got it set up to where I think it's been working pretty well for me. Uh, I might do a few little changes here and there, but for the most part, it's all set up and uh, really, really liking it down here. So where do we start? Um, this room ended up being a 18 by 12 room. So we might as well start out over in this corner where my paint booth is and uh, kind of show you how, that, how we got that set up. All right, so this is the paint booth that used to be out in the basement out here. And uh, now it's in this nice uh, temperature con controlled environment, not so humid and uh, it's heated and it's just more comfortable to do everything. So this is my spray booth here. I'm not gonna go into the specifics of how everything gets done, uh, my process or anything like that, but this is where all the crankbaits that you buy from Trout Whisper Tackle, like these little sinking guys right here, that's where all of these get painted. So I think some people think that my lure company is like a multi-person operation. It's just me. So I get a lot of people asking when stuff's out of stock and I understand some of the more popular stuff really, uh, we go through it pretty quickly when it's in stock and People want it back in stock when they want it. So, but a lot of people don't realize it's just me doing this. And on top of the YouTube and doing this, I also have a full-time job. So uh, it's hard to get everything done that needs to be done, but that was kind of the purpose of building this office. We can make it more efficient. So here's my spray booth here. I'll give you guys kind of a little bit of a tour of it. All my paints up there, uh, my compressor, a couple different guns. Probably the thing that a lot of people are curious about is my ventilation system here. So when I'm spraying in this booth, um, all of the paint fumes go out this vent that I made. I've redesigned this a couple different times, but you can see right here, this is a uh, inline fan and this isn't anything that you can buy. I mean, this is a setup that I built and have been using and modified over the last few years a bunch of different times. And I finally got it to where I, I like it. This is a, oh, I'll, I'll link it down in the description below exactly what it is, but it moves some air. It's an eight inch, um, eight inch fan. It's basically for grow tents and things like that. I had a smaller one on the last booth and it wasn't quite enough. So now we got this big boy and all I gotta do is crank this thing up. I'll crank it all up so you guys can hear how, how much this thing blows. But uh, we got it plumbed out through the ceiling right here. I don't know if the mic will pick that up. Hold on a second. Yeah. Um, this ductwork goes up through the ceiling, through my drop ceiling, and it goes right out a dryer vent. It's a quite a long chute. Uh, it goes right out a dryer vent out the side of my house. This next spot here is pretty important as well. 
again, a lot of these things are not things you can just go out and buy. You have to build them yourself to do this kind of stuff or just do what works for you. So um, this is where we cure, uh, do all the clear coat for all the crankbaits and different things that we paint. So they get clear coated here and then cured in this box and it gives them a nice rock hard finish for you guys. So next to the paint booth, we have some supplies in this cabinet, just some painting supplies. Um, this is actually a light for when we do some filming. I'll show you guys that in a little bit. Um, I picked up these cabinets right here um, down the road for free from somebody. They're throwing them away. So uh, I figured they'd fit perfect in here. Um, they don't have to look all that great, but they actually, they're not, they're not too bad. But I just keep some supplies up in here. This one's got some crankbait blanks. This one's got just a bunch of junk in there. And this has some packaging stuff and not much in there, but um, just a good storage option to get stuff up off the ground. I've got all my rod building stuff in that box right there. This is actually an old countertop from my in-laws place. They replaced their countertops last year. So I had them save the countertop and I basically cut it in half so I can make a 12 foot, I think this is 12 or 13 feet long, nice little narrow tabletop here to build rods on actually. I build a few here and there, but my hope was to maybe someday, if I get into it a little bit more, maybe build a few and sell a few, and that way we'd be set up in, in a little bit more comfortable spot, because up in the office upstairs, it was just not big enough. You couldn't even put a rod together in that room. It was, it was too tight, so. This, you get a nice long countertop right at the right height, and uh, it's pretty sweet. People were talking about in the build video they needed to put up some like fishing pictures, and some mounts and stuff like that. So kind of started that a little bit. We just got some some more recent fish that I've caught. Um, just ones that I had pictures of right on hand. So I put those up. Um, we'll probably fill that up at some point with some other ones. We got a fishing picture over here and we got a pretty sick one over here. A nice brown trout picture here. That's pretty sweet. So uh, we got some stuff up here and we got the jackalope. So can't forget the jackalope, gotta have that. You probably see, this is my heat source right now. There is no heat in my basement. My basement stays around 60 degrees, give or take. Uh, usually a little bit colder when it's when it's you know cold out. So we have to heat this down here. And so I just got this, it's a plug-in baseboard and I just turn it on when I'm down here and it warms it up really quick. And so far it's been working awesome. The good thing about having this shop down the basement is that um, in the summer, it'll be nice and cool. I don't need to air condition it. So the only the only downside is that in the winter, I definitely have to heat it. So it gets, gets pretty chilly down here. It'll get like 57 degrees and uh, you're sitting down here editing videos, your hands get a little cold, but this is my camera station, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if it's kind of a temporary fix for right now, but I just kind of stacked these crates in here and I got all my chargers. I got GoPros charging and different battery, drone batteries charging and stuff. Um, I'm not really sure what else to do. It, uh, it kind of fits up next to this cupboard here, so it's nice and tucked back. I don't know, it's kind of a mess. Camera gear is never really put away because I'm always using it. So it's either charging or it's on the desk or I mean, it, it's hardly ever in my actual camera bag unless I'm going out to use it, so. This is my cabinet that I had custom made by a cabinet maker down the road. He did a really good job. I, I told him kind of what I wanted for a cabinet and what I was using it for, and uh, he built this, so it's pretty sweet. Um, it's all out of pine, but basically I told him I'm going to be storing product in it and using it for like a shipping center. So I wanted some little cubbies and some big cubbies and some doors. So we got a whole bunch of bags that we use to package all the lures up. And we got some tackle boxes. We got some tackle kits that are for sale. We got all the bubble mailers, all the stickers, some boxes, printers on here. We got some supplies down there that we use. But this is the most exciting part for me anyways, because this is what is always stressing me out with this business is that you have so much 
when you're making lures, you have so many lures. There's so many pieces in, and there's not a good way to really store them unless you have something like this. I was keeping stuff in bins and boxes and bags and it was just everywhere, really disorganized. And when you're trying to keep inventory of what you have, it's super hard when stuff's just all over the place and it's not in the same spot every time. So having this has really taken a lot of stress off everything. So we open this up and this is where we keep all of the lures, basically all the spoons and spinner components. So for instance, this box right here is all my spinner bodies or most of them, all the painted spinner bodies. This box right here is unpainted French blades. So you can see it's all organized. Um, and then we got specific spoon patterns in here. We got Wonder Bread, Purple Fade, Rainbow Trout, all that stuff. We got some hats in here. If you guys haven't seen these hats, they're pretty sweet. I got one on here. And actually this is the green one that looks like it's uh it's been through the ringer a few times so uh this is the khaki color it's almost the same color but go check those out on the website um they're pretty sweet hat nice leather patch we got brown we got this charcoal color here and we got the green one it's olive green so speaking of lures um we'll spin around here probably saw this when we walked in we got um, some of my product here. We got some product here. I'm working on this still. Some stuff doesn't have labels, but I'm hoping that once I go through some of the stuff and sell it, all the newer stuff that's going to be coming out of the website um, is going to look like this with new packaging on it with all the specs of what you got in your, in your, ba in your package here. So I, I actually bought this rack here. Uh, the year before COVID hit and there was a Walgreens going out of business and they had this Duracell battery rack and they were selling everything in the store. I would just happen to walk in and I offered the guy not much for it and he gave it to me. So um, this was going to be going to the main sportsman show a few years ago before COVID hit and then uh, they canceled it and I never went and I haven't gone back since. But... Um, I kind of built it out a little bit and put the Everett Lures logo on there, or the Everett Lures name, which is no longer. So we probably should change that, but I'm really the only one that sees it. But So that's just kind of a way to organize a lot of stuff that's in stock. And I've got it all labeled out. So when something goes out of stock, there's a card behind it. I don't know if you guys are interested in all the, the logistical stuff, but uh, you can see these white cards here. When something goes out of stock, the hot head spinner, if you guys have been looking for those, you know they're out of stock. But uh, that tells me it's out of stock and I gotta make some more. So I gotta get on those. I gotta get on a bunch of stuff actually. Now we'll show you kind of the coolest part that I like about this office and the place I spend the most time, my desk. It's a big L-shaped desk. I went back and forth on how to do this. I was gonna go the Ikea route that a lot of the people do for YouTube stuff, but it just wasn't possible. They didn't have a lot of stuff in stock and they don't ship it. So. What I did was I went to Walmart and got some black file drawers, the cheapest ones that they got. And then I went to Lowe's or Home Depot and bought this butcher block that sort of has a live edge on it. You can see there, it looks pretty cool. Nice dark color, you can see all the wood grain. And it's a nice, uh, nice L-shaped desk. You can see we got the editing set up over here. Kind of the kind of the dream setup, honestly. A nice big monitor up on a riser. We got the speakers so we can make sure our audio is crisp. And the reason that this is I made this an L shape is so we can film from this side. So I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. Uh, we got this thing up here my mom made years ago, nice brook trout. And then I got this for Christmas, this light up uh, sign. We'll have to try that out in a minute here and see what that looks like in the video. I don't know if it's gonna be too bright if we're gonna have to move it somewhere else, but. The other thing that's cool, I got all the lights on in here right now, but I can turn off the lights over by the computer and the light way on the other side of the room will stay on. So when I'm working on the computer, 
I'm not getting a weird glare and uh, I can just focus on the colors and being able to see everything in the video because when all the lights are on, it's just too bright for me. So uh, that's one of the reasons why we painted the ceiling that darker color too, to kind of darken it up a little bit because the walls are so light. But let's do this. Let's uh, show you guys what happens when an order comes in. All right, let me print this order and we'll show you what we do here. All right, there's John's order right here. All right, so what we gotta do, grab a bag, grab a thank you card. We go over to our little lure station here. All right, so what did he get? John got Midnight Eggplant Spinner, size one. He got two of those, got an Evergreen, Northern Light Spinner. All right, I'll bring these over here. I'm not gonna give away his last name, but if you're watching this video, John, thank you for the order. Got your stuff right here. Give you guys kind of a look at what the packaging looks like. Kind of hard to see on the camera because it's so glary, but put all those right in John's bag. Let's give him a sticker too for being a good sport. I know he's ordered from me before. I've seen his name. We'll give him a nice six inch Trout Whisperer sticker. Stick that in there. You gotta weigh this thing. Slap that on there, just like that. And he will get this in just a couple days. So that's how it works. I'm the only guy that does it. I paint, I assemble, I get the orders, print the orders, pack the orders, ship the orders, emails, I do everything. It's a one man operation. So that's kind of a tour of my bait cave, I've been calling it. <laughs> kind of like a, I'm like Batman down here in the bait cave, because it, it's in the basement, so it's gotta be the bait cave. So I've only messed with this part once, but uh, the reason I did this L-shaped desk here is because I wanna be able to film at this desk facing this way with the camera shooting straight at me. I think that kind of works. I messed with it a little bit. I'm not the best uh, with getting that type of stuff set up, um, but I'll show you guys kind of what it looks like now. We'll do the sign off for the video. I'll give you guys a little more information about some stuff, but let me get that set up and we'll be right back to you. It just seems really dark, but maybe that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, that's not bad. I just need, I need some lights down behind me, I think, because this thing here, I don't know, what do you guys think of that? Is that too bright? Can you even read what it says? I can't make it any, any dull, any more dull than that. It gets brighter. It gets super bright. Plus when you turn it down, it's got a annoying hum to it, but anyway. So we got a few things hung up. I haven't put any fish mounts down here because I have them up in my I have them up in my uh, living room. I like looking at them, so they stay up there. But maybe we'll bring one down here at some point. I'm getting a couple more, so maybe we can put one behind here. Yeah, let me know what you think about this thing. I don't know if it's too much, not enough. I don't really have anything with my logo on. It. I could put behind there besides this. So so maybe I can make something or have somebody make something. I don't know. So I also wanted to let you guys know that I do have a PO box now that you guys can mail stuff to if you want to. I had people asking about it, so I figured I would, uh, I already had a PO box set up for my business, so um, I'll link it down in the description below. If you wanna send me anything, a letter or something, a lure to try out or something even to hang up on the wall, that'd be pretty sweet. Um, I got something, I got my first piece of mail the other day from somebody, um, from Charlie. If he's watching this video, thanks for sending that along. We already chatted and stuff, but he sent me a nice little letter and he sent me some flies that he, um, he ties. So we'll definitely use those in a video. So kind of cool to kind of connect with you guys, um, some of my subscribers that way. Appreciate you guys watching the videos, buying the lures. Uh, we're almost at 30,000 subscribers. I know that's pretty small overall but for me i'm super happy with that um by the time this video comes out we should be over thirty thousand anyway so i'm sorry that we haven't been posting any ice fishing content really we have did one video and that's because the weather's been crap up here right now it's sleeting and we have no snow and the it the temperatures just haven't really been that cold to build a lot of ice we do have we're starting to get some good ice now where people can get out on it so hopefully um, the next couple of weeks, we're going to be doing some serious ice fishing, and hopefully I'll be able to film some of it for you. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. A little bit different one for you. We'll catch you guys in the next video.